Hello there. In this video, we're going to see how to install and configure the GNU C++ compiler on Windows using MinGW and MSys. So the first thing we need to do is to download MSys2. Make sure that this is MSys2 and not just MSys, which is a much older version of the same software. The URL is sourceforge.net projects msys2. If you can't locate this, you can always search for it on the internet. Sourceforge is a site which distributes a lot of open source software. It should be very safe and very reliable. With msys2, we will get something that looks like a command prompt when we run it, but is actually quite a good approximation to a Unix or Linux terminal. Then we can use that for installing Unix software. The one that we're interested in is the GNU C++ compiler, G++. msys2 will also give us a package manager which we can use for installing software. So that'll save us having to download MinGW separately. MinGW is just a version of G++ that's been built to run in this environment. So let's start by downloading this. So we get this little counter here. If you get asked about cookies, you can answer yes or no as you prefer. It doesn't make any difference to the installation. So we're being asked to save the file, which I shall do. You can save this wherever you like. If you're not sure, you can put it on the desktop or in downloads. Personally, I prefer to keep all my downloaded files in my own directory, but that's just my preference. So let's save that. So as you can see, this is going to take some time. So I might skip the video save you having to sit there and watch the clock count down. All right, so our program is now ready to run, which we're going to do. You'll need to have admin privileges for this, like you always do when installing software on Windows. So we get the usual Windows warning. Are you sure you want to run this software? Let's assume that the answer is yes. So I'll click on run. Next. So we need to tell the installation program where we want to install this. I recommend taking the default unless you have a good reason not to. So next. Start menu shortcuts. Again, accept that. And then it goes away and starts installing. So we now have msys2 installed. So if we click finish, it'll run the terminal. It's all the way over here. So that doesn't look terribly exciting and we can't really do very much with it at the moment. What we need to do is to install the compiler. There's two different commands that we need to use depending on the version of the compiler we want to install. If we want the 32-bit version, we should install this one. And for the 64-bit version, we need to install this one. Unfortunately, I haven't found a way to copy from this slide into the console window, so I'll have to type it out by hand. So I'm going to type in pacman. So this will cause the package manager to run. Minus S is the option to install things, I presume. We type in min gw minus w64 minus x86 underscore 64, I think it is. Yep, then hyphen GCC. Okay, so it's found it anyway. Do I wish to proceed with the installation? I'll put Y for yes and press return. And it's going away and finding all these packages that we need to get a C++ compiler into this terminal. If you do get errors like this, don't worry. It means that it couldn't download that package from one server. So it goes to another server and tries its luck. So it has a pool of servers that it can try to download from. So unless you're very unlucky and it fails with all of them, then it shouldn't be a problem. 
I did actually get this before when I was trying this out where not all the packages were downloaded so I just ran it again and the second time it did work it only picked up the ones that it didn't already have all right so now it's installing the packages all right so now we have the compiler installed unfortunately we can't run it just yet because the compiler has been installed in a directory on Windows and this MSYS terminal doesn't yet know which directory it's in. So we have to go and set that up and we have to restart the MSYS window so it can pick that up. So I'll just type exit in here to get out of it. I need to go into the control panel and change the environment settings on my account. So that's user accounts and then change my environment variables. I don't know if this is still the same in Windows 10. I'm using Windows 7 and Microsoft does tend to change these things for no obvious reason. So I need to add a new environment variable. It's going to be called path. So this will tell programs starting up which directories they can look in to find other programs that they need. Windows already gives programs a list of directories when they start up to find Windows programs, but we can use this for adding directories for our own programs. So the next thing we need to do is to go to a file explorer. We need to find the directory where we installed msys, so that's cmsys64. Then we go into the min gw64 if we installed 64 bits. And if we installed 32, I assume it would be that one. And then we go into the bin directory. And that's where the G++ compiler executable is. You can also type in C++ if you prefer. So we need to give this directory to msys when it starts up. So we need to add it to the path environment variable. So I can click up here and that'll turn it into a, a normal Windows directory path. Then I can do control C to copy it. Then I paste that into the value of the path variable. And then I do OK. One other thing I do, which isn't necessary if you're going to be running MinGW from an IDE, if you're going to be running it from an integrated development environment, I like to be able to compile things directly in the command line. So to do that, I add another environment variable which is called home and when msys starts up it'll actually go into this directory and work in there so if I put the directory where I put my c++ files this could be any directory that you like so when I start up msys and run my compiler the compiler will be compiling files that are in this directory I can now close this now and if I start up msys again, so start and then type in min gw, 64 bit. And now the moment of truth, if I type in g++ to run the compiler, if I put minus v, this will print out the version of the compiler. And it's worked. So it has found the compiler binary. It's printed out a lot of very verbose information about how it's been configured. But we do have the version right at the end in there. And I happen to have a file in here called hello.cc which is a very simple C++ file. So if I type in G++ and then hello.cc it's going to go away and convert that into a binary file. The output is called a.exe but if I run that straight away it won't work. And the reason for that is that by default it doesn't look in the current directory when trying to find programs to run so if i put dot which means the current directory in unix and then slash a.exe that'll mean the file in the current directory and then it finds it and it says hello world so we've now written a c++ program i like to work with this in the command line i use an editor called notepad plus plus this is not the notepad that comes with Windows. This is a separate program that you can download very easily from the internet. So here's the hello 
world program. Don't worry about what this does, we'll go into that later. You'll notice that different parts of the program are in different colours. This is called syntax highlighting and it does make it a lot easier to work with program code. To get this you need to have something called text ft added, which is this. It used to be part of Notepad++ but now you have to install it separately. So if you want to do that you go to plugins, plugins admin, and then then you can either search for it or scroll down this list. I've already got it installed so it's not here but if it's not installed you can select it here and then install it. If you want to be able to use MinGW with an integrated development environment such as Eclipse which some courses use which is not my favourite or Visual Code Studio which is just the editing part of Visual Studio from Microsoft without all the huge amount of baggage that it carries around. You can do that with this, but you do need to add something else. So I'll show you how to do that. So if we do Pacman again to get the package manager, minus capital S, and then make. This will install some other files which are needed by the IDE to control the compilation process. So I'll type Y for yes, then return. Then this will be a nice quick installation. Yes, there it goes. So again, I need to change the environment so that this will get picked up. So I go back into control panel, user accounts, environment variables, and I need to edit the path this time. Go into edit. I need to find out where the make file has been installed. So I go back to msys64, this time I look in user, then bin, and if I, yes, there's the make file. So this is the directory that we need to put in the path. So I'll just do that, same as we did before. To have more than one directory in an environment variable, we need to put a semicolon between them. So I can just paste this in after the semicolon. Don't put any spaces in here because that can mess things up. Then we can close that and close that. And in theory, we should be able to run Eclipse with that. So I happen to have Eclipse installed, so I'm going to try and do that. Again, I have a pretty simple C++ program here. The details don't matter. If I do project build, it should. Yes, amazing, it does work. So this is actually Eclipse, which has picked up the settings for min gw from the environment variables. So there we are. I think I need to go and lie down now. <laughs> okay, so that's it for this video. Good luck with your programming. I'll see you next time, but meanwhile, keep coding.